Wouldn't it be great if you can host your personal website at absolutely no cost? And what if I tell you that it is very much possible and on one of the most popular cloud providers, Azure. And to top it up, you get free SSL certificate and you can set up custom domain for it. Welcome to Omega Codex and my name is Sanal. Today, we'll talk about Azure Static Web Apps, a web app hosting service ideal for hosting static web applications where server-side rendering is not required. You can host an a vanilla HTML JavaScript application or a static web application built using frameworks like Angular or React. In this video, we'll learn more about the features it offers, the steps required to create a static web app and how to set up custom domain for it. This would be good enough for that personal website you wanted for so long. In the end, we'll also see how we can set up managed Azure Functions API and integrate it with your static web app. So fasten your seatbelts and let's get started. Static web apps generally include HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and image assets, which make up the application. In a traditional web server scenario, these static assets are served along with any API endpoints. In case of static web apps, these static assets are separated from a traditional web server and delivered using points which are geographically located around the world. This makes it much faster as the files are closer to the end users. The API is created using a serverless architecture and thus eliminates any need for a full backend server. The service also has a first class integration with GitHub and Azure DevOps which helps you in triggering builds and deploying the changes to the service seamlessly. I'll be using GitHub repository for this video, but Azure DevOps integration isn't much different. You will also need an Azure account for creating static web apps. So if you don't have one, you can use the link displayed here to create an Azure account. So let's go ahead and get our hands dirty. If you follow the link, you will come to this page where you can set up your free Azure account. Most of the services are available for free for the first year and there are many other services as mentioned here almost 55 plus other services are always free and there is a very huge limit available which you can use in the free account you also get 200 dollars of credit which you can use for 30 days and experiment with your subscription so if you don't have an azure account you can come here and create one now let's jump to azure portal and create our static web app to create a static web app you can either use the search menu to search for static web apps or you can come to the left menu here and click create resource and search for static web app and you can click create and get started as for any azure resources we would need to select our subscription and then mention a resource group so i have a resource group called static app and just select that you can also create a new resource group if you want next is a name for your web app so if you have used azure app services before you might have seen a similar field there but there when you mention a name for your web app that becomes part of your url but here in case of static web app is just the name of that resource the url for your application is auto generated by azure and as of now there is no option to configure that the only option you have is to set up a custom domain. So let's give a name. Let's call it static app. Next is hosting plan. So you have two options. One is free and another one is standard. So free is good enough for your personal projects, personal websites, blogs, or any experimentations you are doing. Free is a good plan and it is sufficient for those. And standard is for any general purpose production applications where you have a higher usage and a higher availability is expected so let's just compare these plans so there are two plans available one is free and standard so with both the plans you have 100 gb of included bandwidth now one thing to note here is 100 gb per subscription so if you have multiple static web apps under the same subscription the 100 gb limit would count for all those applications available as part of your subscription once you have crossed that bandwidth your 
web app would not be available for end users in a standard plan you have an option to pay for additional bandwidth if required but if if you are having a personal website i think 100 gb limit is sufficient you have option for two custom domains for your app also you get free ssl certificate so the ssl certificates are free irrespective of the plan you don't have custom authentication and private endpoints option for free but then personal websites generally don't require those a maximum app size is 250 mb which is again i feel good enough unless you have a lot of images and data which is being stored you get three staging environments with your free plan you can have a pre prod environment for your application and the backend apis are provided using managed azure functions which we will talk about in the later part of the video with standard plan you have an option to bring your own api so you instead of using managed azure functions you can have your own azure functions which you have created and use them as part of your application also Uh, free plan doesn't come under SLA, so the SLA only applies to standard plan. But then again, the service is provided by Azure, so a decent amount of availability can be expected. So let's select the free plan and let's select the region as East US. Talking about free things, that subscribe button is absolutely free for you, but it would mean a lot for me. So if you are liking my content, please go ahead and subscribe the channel and don't forget to hit that like button. next is deployment details so as i said earlier it has a first class integration with github and azure devops so you can use github or azure devops for your deployment to this static web app i have already linked my github account so it is already set up here but otherwise you will get an option to sign in uh, to your github account and you can sign in and provide access to uh, your account after that we'll have to select the repository from which we want to deploy so let's select uh, sample static web app branch which i will be deploying is from master so once you have linked your github or azure devops account it would create a pipeline file onto your repository when we complete the setup so for that we'll have to select a preset based on the type of application which we are deploying so in our case it's an html application but if it's a angular application or a react or blazor accordingly you can select the type and it would create a um, workflow in case of github it would create a github actions workflow file into your repository so this is something we don't have to worry about they have already made it easy for us to set up this deployment pipeline so in our case i'll just select html my app location is source this is where all my static web app files uh, are residing for example slash represents the root of your app where or slash app would represent a app directory where the code of your application is residing so in my case it is slash src api location is not applicable for us right now because we haven't set up any apis yet and output location we can leave it as it is you can also preview the workflow file before going ahead and you can see that it has a pipeline file generated for us now let's go next and create our app let's give it a few minutes so that it creates and deploys an application for us the app is created now let's open it we can see that it has created a domain name for us a default one which it creates whenever we set up an azure static web app and we have an uh, we have a message that thank you for creating an app and we haven't received any connect content for the site and check the status of github action so if you click that it will take you to the github page where your github action is set up so i think in the meantime it has built and it has successfully deployed so if we go ahead and check the status we can see that build and deployed so let's open this link sample application is deployed and if we go to our repository we can see that a workflow was created 3 minutes before for this uh, app which was created by azure for us now that our app is ready let's set up a custom domain for it 
can come to this option called custom domains you have two options one is you can use azure dns so custom domain on azure dns or custom domain on other dns if you have an external provider so in my case i'll use an external provider and here you can come and define your domain name so you could do something like you know store.com and then it would uh, give you the instructions for that in my case i'll be using my own domain and i'll not use a parent domain i'll do use a subdomain so web app demo let's start in so i'll use a subdomain uh, for this demo and i'll use a c name so i'll just copy this and come to my domain hosting page and i'll add just add this record so i see my canonical name is this on this fast web app demo just update it so my dns setting is updated let's go back to azure and i click add and give it few moments to validate my domain ownership it, it does mention that it can take up for for dns entries to take an effect but usually it is updated in a matter of few minutes okay after a long wait it's been validated and let's just close it and our dem domain custom domain is added so let's check and our custom domain now points to the same static web app and the interesting thing is that the ssl is already issued for your custom domain as well so you didn't have to do anything and your free ssl is ready so probably the only cost you would have is to get that domain registered and which usually is not very expensive you can go to providers like go at godaddy or hostgator and get your domain registered very easily at a very reasonable price and usually they run offers that you get first year free or something like that now let's check out how we can integrate an api to the static web app i've downloaded the sample web app to my local machine from github so we'll need few prerequisites before we can implement manage azure functions for static web app so the first one is we'll need to install few visual studio extensions the quicker way is to have or to install the azure extension which brings all uh, required extensions along with it so you get app service app azure static web apps azure functions azure storage and other services related extensions are automatically included in this uh, extension otherwise you can individually also install azure static web, web apps or uh, azure functions extension so once that is done you can sign in with your azure account through this uh, azure extension once that is done let's go ahead and create our api so for that we'll have to open the command palette so you can just press f1 and it will show up the command palette and let's search for azure static web apps and select create http function so the language i'll be using is c sharp let's give a name for this function so i'll call it message and let's call it awesome function access type is anonymous and our api is created so which would be part of our static web app the api method just takes a name as a query parameter and uh, responds a message a hello message so let's modify index.html to call this api let's add the code our api method slash api because it's under the api folder and message is our function name and i'm parameter i'm sending a parameter called my static app and so that uh, code is ready but we'll have to test it out on our local environment to do that we have uh, a command line tool which is provided by azure so we can install a package called static web app cli which is an npm uh, install package and let's give it a few minutes to install the package is installed now we can run it with the command lwa start source 
so src is the folder where our static web app is present and our api location is in the api folder so you can just run that and what it would do is it would emulate the similar environment on a local machine so it will start our static web app as well as the azure function so that we can test it so now the azure static web app emulator is started and it is available at this location so let's open it and see and now we can see the message which was fetched from our api so it is working and can now deploy it to static web app on azure so for that we'll have to modify our pipeline the github actions so let's add it here so if you remember when we were creating the static web app we had left the api location field as empty and we had only mentioned the src or the app location so now we can update the api location and let's commit our code and it created index file and let's commit and push our changes now our changes are pushed and let's see if our pipeline is triggered yeah so as soon as we committed the changes have triggered a build so now the changes are deployed let's confirm by updating here that demo see if it is updated so it's done it's a quick and easy right let's go back to our app and see what are the changes here let's go to apis and our new endpoints should show up here so we have a function app and it's managed and we have a function called message we as we can see as azure static web apps provide support for man managed azure functions apis so in addition you can link to your own apis if you are using a standard plan so if bring your name api backends are not supported in pre-hosting plan if you have any app settings which you want to use with your azure functions you can configure those app settings like if you have a db connection string um, or a storage account connection string or any any other app settings which you want to use in your azure functions so as as we do it with traditional azure functions implementation locally you could have it in your local settings json file and here you can mention it in this application settings and it would pick up from here if you ever want to change your hosting plan from free to standard you can come to hosting plan and change it to standard and you can use other additional features which are part of standard but for a normal personal website or a personal project i think free is good enough so with that you should be able to create that personal website you have been wanting for long that too absolutely free let me know your thoughts on this and any feedback suggestions you have in the comment section below if you want me to get into more detail about authorization, monitoring, or bring your own API regarding Azure Static Web Apps, then let me know that as well. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button so that YouTube suggests it to other like-minded people. The book suggestion for today is this, Sprint How to Solve Big Problems and Test New Ideas in 5 Days. I'm still reading it, but I have found it incredibly interesting. It was gifted to me by a friend. This book seemed to be apt for this video so that next time you have your big idea, you can test it out using Azure Static Web App. If you are into DevOps and want to streamline your development using Azure DevOps, check my video here. And if you are into API development and want to learn about gRPC services, check this video out. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Till then, adios.